Hey everyone, welcome to episode number three of my show, Life is a Potter, where I show you what my life is like week to week. And this week, I actually have something really special. I have a new technique that I'm just starting to add into my production line. Adding texture onto a piece that I'm gonna put a crystal glaze on, it's a dicey situation because if the texture is too prominent, it'll mess with how the glaze flows, it'll mess with the way the crystal grows, and it just makes the whole thing look messy. But with this technique, I get these really nice white highlights. It doesn't affect the crystal growth. And I'm just really excited about it because you basically don't usually see texture with crystalline glazes, and this seems like a pretty good way to pull it off. So not only am I doing something new for myself, I'm doing something that you just don't really see in the field of crystalline glazes in general. So let me show you how I do it. actually been playing around with this wavy throwing line texture on and off for years but I'm only just now making the jump and putting it into production. Whenever I have a new idea I always try to spend a lot of time in R&D refining the idea until it's top-notch, and then I only begin to produce it gradually. This careful, slow pace is really important for two reasons. One, you always want to focus on mastery of a well-thought ideas instead of always spastically jumping on your latest new idea. Two, no matter how good an idea is at first, it is just due diligence to spend the time in R&D and test your market with a small batch. I'm making just 25 of these textured whiskey sippers. Depending on how fast they sell is what's gonna determine if I continue making them. New ideas, no matter how cool they are, can never be counted on for cash flow. And as soon as I finish these 25, I'm right back to the classics. 50 of the classic smooth surface whiskey sippers and 100 bowls are the bulk of my production for this week. Exploring new ideas and producing the classics that are guaranteed to sell are two things that require careful balancing. If you want to grow your business, you basically want to explore as much as you can possibly afford. But exploring is a real cost. It takes time, attention, research, and you must always acknowledge the possibility that it leads to just a dead end. So you can't spend all your time exploring. You've got to balance it with producing things that you know will sell so that you can have that baseline of cash flow that you can depend on. Which brings us to another really important point about cash flow. How do I price my work? When I was first out of college, I thought, okay, it takes 30 minutes of labor to make a mug. I want to get paid $25 an hour and cover my materials costs. Those mugs sold really well. But no matter how many I sold, I was still completely broke. I knew I had to refine my formula. I realized that I also needed those mug sales to pay for the time it took to clean my studio, pay for parts of my kiln that broke down over time, pay for time and resources spent promoting my work, paying for things like booth fees, taxes, studio rent, and make some small attempt 
to pay for the time and resources spent on R&D. This complicates things quite a bit and requires you to have a perspective on a timeline that isn't just accounting for this month, but expands to the entire fiscal year. Even with that, there are larger equipment costs that will only come up every couple years or every couple decades, and you need to account for them. Like buying a new kiln. They start at around $3,000, but depending on what you want or need, it can be way more than that. You gotta try to map all this out, but you really don't know how well it works until you get to the end of the year, pay your taxes, and assess the situation. There's no blanket formula, and every studio is gonna have to make their own unique formula and be flexible enough to adjust it over time. When you're trying to do all this while you're starting and growing your business, it's gonna be really hard. You're basically like a startup, except no venture capitalist is gonna invest in you. So you have to bootstrap all the costs yourself. Most startups typically don't turn a profit for years while they're growing and building their foundation. As a studio potter, you're basically doing the same thing. So you just sort of need to accept that you're gonna be working really long hours on very little pay. But you gotta make sure that you're building up to something. What's your end game? What's the super sweet business model that you're trying to create actually look like? As so long as you're working towards finding and building that business model, the whole like starving artist cliche becomes a much easier thing to deal with because you're building up to something that's awesome. And if you are trying to build up to something awesome, you gotta have a plan. And I could talk about this endlessly, but I think I should probably cut myself off there. Uh, if you're an artist or an entrepreneur, definitely familiarize yourself with the 80-20 principle, the idea of like disproportionate returns, unknown unknowns, and read every biography that you can on people that you think you admire or are successful. And I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, again, thanks so much for joining me. I'll try to have a next episode out this upcoming Monday. And definitely in the comments, let me know what you guys think.